Hey guys, welcome back to Embracing the Journey. And this week, I have the honor of being joined by Greg and Patsy Hicks. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so we're going to talk about business and Jesus. But could you guys just tell us a little about your family and business? Let us get to know you guys a little sure. better. Do you want to talk about family? Sure. Um, well, we have um, three children. And our oldest just got married. She's 20. <laughs> you tend to lose the years after they get a little bit older. She's 24 and lives in Maryville. And then we have an almost 22-year-old Maddie um, who attends public church with us. And then our son is 17. His name is Will. He's a senior at Cleveland High School. And we just have, I think we have a, just a unique family. We're very tight-knit. Yes, um, very We love tight-knit. being together. Mm-hmm. And we just, we know it's super important. Like, family is extremely important to us, so. Yes. Yeah. We've been married 26 years. Come on, 26, 26 years. years. And uh, we still on the business side of it. We started Impressions Catering coming up on almost 20 years ago. 27? So 27. 27. 27. <laughs> okay. 27. You I lose those that. after yeah. a while. Yeah. After there's, when there's a two on the front end, it's like, all right. <laughs> Because it's all so good, right? Yeah, that's right. It's all so good. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) It's like time's not even elastic. Oh, I feel you. Yeah. So so we started Impressions Catering um, coming up on on 20 years ago, so 2001. So it's been, you know, obviously the majority of our of our marriage and how does it all come together? Mm. Um, I was 27 years old, you know, when we when we started Impressions, Um, and. Yeah, still plugging along. Mm-hmm. I love that. And plugging along through a global pandemic. Yes. That ca- so what exactly does Impressions do? Maybe that'll help people. And then we'll talk about COVID-19 and yeah. how your whole life's changed. Oh, yeah, just a little bit. Um, yeah, so Impressions is an off-premise catering company. Um, and over the years, we've evolved from, which means we don't have um, guests on site. So yes. a venue, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I always tell people when they ask us if we're local or do you go here, catering is loaded on the truck and go. You know, yes. where, where is your party? If it's your house, if it's a venue, if it's a, a church or wherever it may be, if it's the airplane tarmac, I mean, like, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, so over the years, we've evolved from just doing the food part of it mm-hmm. to then offering china and rentals and linens and all those kind of things. And so there's, it's, there's a lot of moving pieces that nice. go along with that. And, and then there's the food. So um, I've heard one of my colleagues say that um, off-premise catering is, it's the 80-20 rule uh, where really at the time of the event, 20% of what we do has been the food part of it and 80% is the logistics. Wow, we, have to be, we have to be logistics experts to, to like pull this off, you know, mm-hmm. the things that we've, that we've done. So yeah, we do, we do a little bit of everything, but it is all off-premise um, and we offer all kinds, there's not a, specific kind of food that we do mm-hmm. or service that we do um, it's they're really the, the best answer and the worst answer are the same it's we really do a little bit of everything yeah I understand and I will kind of push back and say I think you do offer a specific type of food which is delicious food <laughs> so um, and this is an advertisement if you want to like check them out yes please yeah, yeah. <laughs> visit us online at impressionscatering.net or call us at 423-614-4051 or Instagram, so or lots Instagram. of ways. Yeah. You yeah. can find them. Um, <laughs> I love it. So, um, <laughs> COVID presents unique challenges to an off-premise catering business because everything got shut down. Yes. So March hits, middle of March, the world kind of stops, yeah. for lack of a better term. What were the yeah. immediate impacts felt on, and you can take this any way you want, business, family, because I know for you guys it's all connected. Yeah, it is all connected. Um, and so not only, you know, is it our business, I obviously work full-time in the business, Patsy's working full-time in the business, Hannah, our oldest, uh, who does and for years has done sales and events uh, and planning and coordinating, um, that's her full-time job. Uh, Madeline, until recently, this was her full-time job. Yes. You know, she is a student. Um, Will, our son, works in the business. Um, we call it the friends and family plan. So, like my my uh, nieces and nephews work in the business. 
we do have a number of other of other employees that are not uh, related, <laughs> for yeah. me, you know, my family. Um, but yeah, it, it affected everything. You know, the um, the the short story of of what happened uh, was we we were in New Orleans mm. and escaped New Orleans like right before it became a red zone. Wow. Uh, we were in New Orleans for spring break mm -hmm. uh, and we we're traveling home. And so we're not watching local news and all those things and traveling home. And my phone was blowing up with three or four events that we had planned um, for that weekend wow. to the tune of a couple hundred, 700 people, I mean, worth of events that we had for that weekend. Um, as well as then into the into the coming month or so, canceling. What is going on? And so I got online to find out what was happening and found out that uh, you know there was a stay-at-home order and all that. And so literally within just hours of business as usual to then um, uh, the, the beginning of cancellations and postponements. Um, so um, for the time that we were and stay at home uh, under stay at home mandates or you know all the shutdown um, if you can imagine we do on average and, and some is seasonal like March is not quite as busy as May is a mm -hmm. huge wedding month um, but on average we do between one and four events you know on a weekend or you know like that and uh, half of March all of April all of May uh, and then so all of those events were either canceled or postponed Wow um, so three months worth of revenue and business and what we do was basically outlawed you know yes uh, and so it's it wasn't a, um, be cautious and you know wear a mask when you go to the store or you know operate uh, it was you can't do what you do um, there wasn't um, you know fortunately it was left open for restaurants to do curbside and mm -hmm. pick up. And so, you know, you weren't allowed in the restaurant for a period of time. Um, but for us, it was, you, you can't operate, you know, yeah. this, this is what you do. Um, and, and I don't say that in terms of they were pointing a finger at events and saying yeah. they were just outlawing gatherings above 10 people, 50 people, you know, whatever it might be. And so, yeah, it stopped, uh, in terms of our, our mainstay. And this is all we do. We don't have, a restaurant that we do this on the side, yeah. or I have a main business that I do this on the side. I mean, this is what we do, uh, 100%. And it just went away. And most of June, July, August, we're even we're even recently. So now we're in October. Mm -hmm. We're still having weddings, um, you know, that had been planned for the last nine months to a year, yeah. are still postponing into next year. Wow. Um, so we're still seeing the ripple effect of. Um, maybe not so much locally, mm -hmm. local mandates and restrictions, but we, we have had a number of, of um, brides, for example, that are out of state yes. that they can't travel from their state. <laughs> it makes sense. So, yeah, and so, yeah, so it, it completely turned everything upside down. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when this is the only thing you do and you see it, it was over the next couple of weeks especially, it was just every day we were talking to three, four people they were canceling or postponing, you know, their events that were coming up in May, June, July. And, and it was, and we experienced um, that scare because Hannah was set to get married April 11th, so <laughs> right in the middle of it. And I mean, it was gut wrenching to go through and watch the process of what do we do? Can mm -hmm. we, can we do this? And should we do this? And are we even going to be allowed, you know, to do this? And yes. so it's. So we, we, I mean, we feel for our, our brides that, you know, are going through this and we've tried to, I especially have tried to, to relay to them, like, I, I understand what you're feeling. Most definitely. You know, so what do we do? You know, how do we, how do we respond to that? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it has been incredibly challenging. It is. And you said something there about, I think for some people, life is beginning to return to some rhythms they can you can go in a restaurant now depending on your comfortability you can do these things but you said their wedding's still canceling right you know you're still feeling the ripple effects and the reality is you're probably going to for a while yeah so i think that helps for people that may be going 
well, man, I, I like what's going on. Football's back on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to realize not everyone's in that situation. Yeah. And there are people still struggling, hurting, trying to figure this out. So I think that right. even helps from the empathy level, you know? Yeah, it's not over. Yes. Um, and even though we're we're more open now, even with uh, with uh, the lift of some of the mandates and some of those restrictions, even as, as recently as last week, um, in terms of things we can and can't do for service, um, the weddings are not here, you know, because they're they're and and you're you know a lot of our corporate uh, corporate business stuff mm-hmm. that would have an annual party or uh, you know those kind of things they're going virtual. You yes, know, they were doing a conference. They're going virtual, you know, like that. Um, so all this great technology, which is great for Zoom and it's great for sitting in the living room and being safe, watching church and all that. Um, it's also destroying our industry. <laughs> yes. No, you're exactly right. I chuckle as I say destroying our <laughs> industry, but the reality is we're, we're potentially looking at the death of many catering and event companies, not, and not just not just catering, but event-related industries. Yeah, you're right. It's scary. And, I mean, you guys are currently making it, we are. but you're not out of the Praise woods, God. and there's a lot of people that haven't even made it this far. Right. You know, that maybe they didn't have the 20 plus years and the experience. And I mean, I just think about people that have even gone into this field in 2020 and have built towards it. Like we have some friends and it's like, you've been planning for this for years. You make the jump, a leap of faith, and now it just crumbles beneath you. Yep. That's hard. With, you know? And without any, you know, nobody did anything wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, this isn't anybody's fault you know that that your business is struggling or whatever um you know it's um we don't i don't question you know god's taking taking this out on you like we as you like we're pretty stupid humans like we we, like think you know god's up there with a tick mark you screwed up i'm gonna you know (laughs) i'm gonna strike the event industry you know what i mean like i don't you don't think that at all it's Mm. it's definitely um I think for both of us, I think it's really driven us. We have to rely on Jesus. I, 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 I run toward Him because I have no hope. Mm-hmm. You know, I truly, you know, one of the things that is, I've really been struck with over the last couple of months is I truly have no hope in anything else. So, you know, um, and I'm not just saying that because we're here having this conversation. The reality is there were there were many times over the last couple of months like god where are you not in the sense of what's happening or what has happened with our business and industry and like that Mm -hmm. but in terms of direction okay where do we go from here how do we navigate you know through this and and with no at the time so think back to march Mm -hmm. you know now we have a little bit more knowledge Mm -hmm. um think back to march and april where there was there was no end in sight, you know, and where everybody thought, what the experts or whatever thought uh, was going to be over in a matter of weeks, and it and burned through the, you know, it's burned through its course or whatever, like it's, we're still feeling the ripple effect. Of You're right. That, you know? So, you know, so crying out to God and, and really asking for where, where do we go from here? And not just where do we go from here, but obviously how do we navigate through, through this? Mm-hmm. Um, and not just you know, we don't. We didn't have the ability to. Let's just stay at home. You know, let's stay <laughs> yes. at home. Order. Let's just stay at home. You yes. Know? Uh-huh. You know, it's we'll collect unemployment, or we'll. You know, we'll, I mean, I guess we had that choice. You know, but we really did because yeah. that wasn't. You know, the way our anyway. So we we had to we had to keep moving. Yes, you yeah. did. And I think that's one thing that I respect about you guys so much is. Just seeing how you did keep moving, and I know pivot has become a part of our vocabulary. Word of the year. Yes, <laughs> yep. you know that and social distance. I feel like you know mm-hmm. one two up there, but also something that we've talked about and I've heard a lot of leaders discuss is this whole idea of reimagining. Mm-hmm. That okay, you've got this adversity, you have these limitations, but you can see through the limitations and reimagine your business, your life, habits. So. How have you guys been able to reimagine some through this? And maybe how's that affected you personally? Um, as you've walked through some experiments, I would assume maybe some worked and some didn't. Um, so what about this whole reimagining? Do you want to 
accomplish that? Well, we once we realized things were not happening for a while. Indefinitely. Um, yeah. My whole thought, because I, I handle mostly the bills mm -hmm. and making sure everybody gets paid. Yes. Um, okay, we have to generate cash flow. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do? And we have in the past, especially when we first opened the business, we did daily meals or weekly mm -hmm. meals. And I just thought, you know what, it's the perfect time. Nobody can go to a restaurant. <laughs> yes. And nobody really still wants to cook. <laughs> so, like, this is an awesome opportunity for us to take advantage of people needing to eat, mm -hmm. wanting to eat good food, and us keeping our employees employed. Yes, um, definitely. Plus generating cash flow for the entire business. So that's where we started moving toward. We started doing weekly, daily meals mm -hmm. where people could order online or call us and order the meals that were available that week for the day. Um, and then while we were in the middle of that, <clears throat> um, the ARPS, they love Taco Tuesday, and I think the week before, Corey <laughs> said, "Hey, yeah, that's why don't you? Right. Why don't you?" We, we were texting. Sorry. Yeah. He's like, "I really want some bang bang shrimp." Yeah, he's and like, so out of the blue, he was like, "I'm craving some bang bang shrimp." You can imagine him on his mail route. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, we had that come bang from? bang shrimp tacos <laughs> and bang bang chicken for Kristen, and so. The next like week, in their I driveway, said, you know, went home and had yeah. a, a socially distanced dinner in their driveway. I love the it. Next week, I was like, "Why not do Taco Tuesday? Why don't we just make it a special t on yes. Tuesdays?" Everybody loves to say that, and <laughs> we love to take advantage of that. And so we started doing Tuesdays, just Taco Tuesday, and the meals kind of went away mm -hmm. once restaurants really began to open and people felt more comfortable getting yes. out. So that business just slowly trickled away and we realized we were putting a lot more effort and that that's the challenge too like mm. we were putting a lot of effort into it and there wasn't a lot of return in mm. fact it was probably negative that and makes so sense. when do we when do you stop and then we were there all day yes yeah, we were spending all day every day you know for it so yeah. so we decided to stop that but we've continued taco tuesday on tuesdays just because one he enjoys it <laughs> <laughs> um but um, business catering started again at the very end of May. Mm -hmm. um, the challenging thing was we lost most of it. And then what we're still seeing even today, um, dealing with the people who have not rebooked for next year. And thankfully, a lot of people have postponed into next year. Yes. So 2021 Looks. could be a really great year. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you are making projected sales for the year, and this was before COVID or even after Ooh. COVID, we were at a point in our family life where we were like, you know, let's, let's just, we can choose to turn some things down maybe. Mm -hmm. And, but now because things have changed so much it's like there's no way you can Bring turn it. anything down <laughs> oh right and even today talking to a client whose wedding is coming up in a few weeks who was at 200 people is now at 80 people wow. and so you know just the sales have changed so much and so we're still feeling that it's so that has just been extremely it's been extremely challenging most definitely um, lots of prayer and you know even knowing that and saying god we know you're in control mm -hmm. and we know that you love us mm -hmm. and that you want the best for us and we don't understand it mm -hmm. but you know how this is going to turn out yes so we're just going to trust you cool. wow. and that like i want you guys to know you guys live that that's yeah. not just something you're saying on a video and like you have to yeah you know if you're gonna keep putting your faith in Jesus like you don't really have any other option in this season and I just respect you guys so much for I think you're inspiring to me and to a lot of us in how you've maintained your faith and you do trust God and you're just your grit of like we are going to make this work we're going to find a way we're going to crunch the numbers okay this isn't working we're going to make the hard call and pivot here I just respect everything you guys have done so much I think it's really good I, we, and we really, um, we you know, through all this, it'd be easy as a if I was a if I was just a business person um, that didn't have um, 
the Holy Spirit as a compass, mm -hmm. um, it would be easy to hold clients' feet to the fire and say, yes. no, you booked a thing, and, you know, yeah, there's this global pandemic, but you still owe me the money, and all that, you know, yeah. or, um, you know, into guest counts and that. Like, a lot of the, most of this is entirely out of their control. You're right. And we understand that. And as hard as it is to go from a, a 200 person wedding to it looks like more it's going to be more like 80. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've 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 fudged on some, even some of the contract things mm -hmm. where we have a minimum or a, you know like that kind of, because yes. we know it's out of there. That's good. Well, we know what's happening. Um, we've you know we've made the decision to, uh, and this is against. I'll say this is against the advice of caterers that are friends of mine from around the country who are like, no, you should be, you know, charge a rebooking fee or charge mm -hmm. a, you know, whatever. And like, we, we, again, we've gone through it with Hannah. Yes. We are a business, but we're people. Yes. And if we can't treat people like people, you know, and, and be compassionate mm -hmm. to that, then we're doing something wrong. That's good. You know, so, you know, we've not charged rebooking fees and we've not, and, and to our hurt, you know, meaning financially, yes. you know, where, where, you know, we probably had every legal right to hold people to certain things. Um, we just decided we weren't going to do that, you know, and, and that's been hard because you just, you watch, you know, it's, it's your income and you watch that as a, I have, I have a legal right to do this, mm -hmm. but I don't have the human right to do this mm -hmm. and to not treat wow. somebody like that. Yeah. You know? So and it's, it's COVID added another challenge for when weddings did start people couldn't serve themselves wow you're right, right. and so we had yeah, to you can't touch anything. we had to make it just like how do we how okay that's great but now we have to hire more people uh, which with lower <laughs> guests so you're already your profits being cut and then it's cut even more when you have to hire more people yeah. to pull it off wow yeah. so i hadn't thought of that later our guests and, or our clients have had, and we've been up front, like we have to hire more people. And, and overall, everybody is completely understood and are willing to say, okay, we understand and, and let's, we're gonna go ahead and do that. And there are some who haven't, and we've had to say what's important is, is us getting that money. Well, it's important, but what about making that client feel like, okay, they were willing to eat that cost because that wasn't, part of the original yes. and so like we've all had to kind of work together mm -hmm. it hasn't just been us right. our clients have had to be understanding as well right. of like they can't control that we, they have to hire more people right. and it's like COVID has hurt a lot of a lot of people financially it has and so we've we've all had to be very flexible and understanding mm -hmm. of, of situations like that definitely and I just admire like you guys for not putting yourselves first. I mean, when you guys were talking, I was, I thought the Holy Spirit reminded me of Philippians 2, 5 through 11, where Jesus just he shows up and he doesn't claim his rights, but he continually lowers himself even to the point of becoming a servant and then dying on the cross. And it's like, you guys have just said, okay, how can I become love displayed for these people? How can I show them Jesus? How can I take one that's gonna hurt us, but to honor those people? And that's real. And that's such an example to all of us. So thank you guys for doing that.